Alrighty, welcome back. We just talked about some of the coaching crises going on in college football. There are plenty of them, but a lot of coaches moving on to the NFL for a better work-life balance, which is a whole can of worms. And uh, a lot of coaches moving to the SEC and the Big Ten a little bit earlier than some coaches would um, for positions that maybe they wouldn't have in the past. So a lot of stuff happening on that front. But let's talk about the good stuff happening in coaching, and let's talk about the best hires that have happened in this cycle. Um, there definitely have been a ton of high-level uh, hires, some from the NFL level, some getting you know normal uh, you know title raises, some working their way up in the industry, and some guys just taking a job because it's the more comfortable situation. So, um, but let's start in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, because. I think they made two of they made a ton of really really good hires, but I think the two that really really stood out to me are Bo Davis and Kevin Peoples, both D line coaches. Bo Davis, uh, more of an interior defensive line guy, obviously did wonders at Texas with Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy this past year, and then Kevin Peoples, kind of an edge rushing guy, um, outside linebackers in some way. Um, both these guys are just elite developers of football players. Obviously, Bo Davis, I talked about, Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy. Byron Murphy looks to be possibly a first-round pick. Um, We will definitely break down the draft as it uh, approaches more and more. Um, And I think it's something that uh, a guy like Mason Smith has got to be not necessarily kicking himself. He's a plenty talented guy and uh, definitely um, could find his way in the NFL. But I think if you were to come back for another year, it would have been pretty incredible to see what Bo Davis could have done for the development of him. And then Kevin Peoples coming over from Missouri with Blake Baker, um, the new defensive coordinator there, just an uber talented guy at just getting the most out of players. Um, you know, Missouri wasn't necessarily littered with talent. Now there was plenty of talent at Missouri a year ago, but, um, just got the most out of all of his guys. That defense played really, really fast. And especially on the defensive line, they were very disruptive in a number of ways. And Kevin Peoples was a huge part of that. And also brought in, um, was a huge part of the recruitment of Williams Nawari, who um, is currently up in Mizzou and, you know, a huge guy for them uh, coming into this year. So uh, two guys that, you know, LSU fans have to feel great about having on campus And also, along with Blake Baker's really aggressive uh, play-calling style in pass rushes and different stuff like that, there could be plenty of guys on this LSU defensive line that absolutely blow up next year. Uh, There could, you know, um, there's not necessarily the prerequisite uh, number of dudes that you're used to seeing necessarily across the LSU line, but there's still plenty of them, don't get me wrong, so... Uh, Bo Davis and Kevin Peoples, I think, were fantastic hires, and I think they'll really show uh, what they're worth in 2024. And uh, as you've seen over the past couple of years at Texas, Bo Davis is worth a whole lot. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, also, a, a pretty remark one of the weirder coaching hires of this entire cycle, Chip Kelly finding his way to Columbus to be the new offensive coordinator. Now, there are obviously some things going on behind the scenes at UCLA that was not making Chip Kelly super happy. Um, That is very clear to me at this point because it doesn't happen very often that a guy leaves a head coaching job in the same conference to go be an OC at another team in that conference. So it's very weird. Uh, I I won't lie to you. Him and Ryan Day do have some history. He was Um, the offensive coordinator at New Hampshire while Ryan Day was the quarterback there. So there is a little bit of familiarity there. But from a football perspective, an absolute slam dunk. Uh, This might be the best hire of the entire cycle, if I'm being totally honest. There are plenty of really good hires. But when you get a guy with that much head head coaching experience, excuse me, um, and a guy that has, you know, had that much success, especially on the offensive side of the ball, It's always a win, and Ohio State's going to have the prerequisite talent to work with there. So when it comes to um, looking at this Ohio State team going into next year, it's hard not to be excited about them, and I'll uh, get into them a little bit more in the top 10 segment coming up here in a second. But 
Um, I think he will get the most out of this run game, which is really where the key is for this team uh, in this season. Will Howard is not necessarily an elite runner, but is definitely more than capable. And then Quinshaw Judkins and uh, Travion Henderson are just an elite running back duo. I think the best in the country. Um, so I think that's really where they'll make their money. And then Will Howard's just got to execute. And that's what he's been doing for four years while at Kansas State. And I'm sure he will do that while at Ohio State. So he's definitely someone I will be keeping my eye on. Chip Kelly, I think, will get the most out of him. Um, but another guy that took a defense uh, or took a coordinator job, excuse me, at a big school was Kane Womack, who came over uh, to Bama to join uh, Kalen DeBoer's staff from South Alabama. This guy that Bama really needs on defense. I think he is a huge energy guy, and with a head coach that has an offensive background, you need a guy that can take over a defense that you know had Nick Saban <laughs> in the past. You know, however long. Uh, pretty much my entire childhood. So uh, bringing in someone with this much energy, I think, helps a ton. But also, the dude can really coach football. He gets the most out of his talent, um, like we talked about with Kevin Peoples. He's a very, very um, aggressive play caller like Blake Baker at LSU. So um, he has you know a ton going for him, obviously. And then the staff around him is very good. Uh, Eddie Reese is an incredible guy to have on staff an associate head coach there, so he will be a huge help, no no doubt about that. And then, obviously, having Maurice Lindquist, a former head coach on staff, um, they have a ton of really, really good people in that room, so he will have a ton of people to lean on, which obviously helps. And then Nick Saban will be somewhere around that he could probably pick his brain a little bit, which doesn't hurt by any means. Uh, but another uh, defensive coordinating hire that happened at a team that, Alabama wishes it didn't happen at is uh, Traverius Robinson take the co-defensive coordinator and safeties job at U, uh, UGA and I think this might be my favorite and the best hire of the entire cycle and it's not necessarily just because of what they got in Traverius Robinson it's because they were able to keep Will Muschamp around which is just insane to think about because now in that room you have Kirby Smart, Will Muschamp, uh, Glenn Schumann and uh, Charvarius Robinson, all of those guys know defense more than most people in the country, most people that know anything about football. So having those four guys all in the same room, being able to bounce off of each other and, um, you know, come up with incredible game plans, I'm sure, will be something to really watch here. And another thing to keep in mind here, just an elite recruiter, uh, maybe even a better developer, uh, but an elite recruiter got Caleb Downs to Alabama. Um, and with guys like Malachi Starks already in the room there, it's going to be an insane group. Uh, I'll be totally honest. John Eliguero, I think will benefit a ton from this. KJ Bolton's coming in. I think he'll benefit, benefit a ton. So it's an embarrassment of riches at Georgia as it always is, but I think having Traverius Robinson on staff will bring them to kind of uh, possibly bring them, you know, to an elite, elite level on that back end of that defense where um, it's been really good at times, but there have been some holes at cornerback uh, two a year ago was kind of a question mark in some ways. Um, but having Traverius Robinson in that room can only really help that. But the guy he took over for um, is another incredible hire, Fran Brown, the new head coach at Syracuse. He's created this energy around Syracuse that I have not seen in my lifetime. Now, I know Syracuse is a very storied program with a lot of very, very uh, incredible players that have come out of there. But in my lifetime, you know, they, they haven't necessarily been um, a huge topic of conversation in college football. And that has changed fairly quickly. Um, obviously, the big coup for them was getting uh, Kyle McCord to come uh, come over from Ohio State. Obviously, Kyle McCord was not the most liked guy in Columbus this past year, but I don't think that necessarily means he won't be very popular in Syracuse. I think, obviously, um, the level of football is a little bit different, um, so the pressure on him to play perfect will not necessarily be there uh, as much. So, I think this will allow him to kind of just play free, be who he wants, and uh, um, 
you know, get back to just playing football, which is what all these guys just really want to do at the end of the day. So um, I just love this hire for a number of reasons. And one of the big reasons is the amount of guys that he has developed while at his time at Georgia is just insane. Uh, Malachi Starks, Chris Smith, Tyke Smith, uh, Javon Bullard. Um, there's tons of names. I, I can't even think of all the names right now. But he's been one of the most popular guys in Athens while his time there and has been, you know, super praised just around the sport overall. They were surprised he didn't take a job sooner uh, as a defensive coordinator or something like that. So it is a very interesting uh, thing to see. And he has one of my most interesting favorite uh, transfer portal additions in Devin Grant, who is a safety from Buffalo. Um, the dude absolutely flies around, and I think under Fran Brown, he could really take it to the next level. So I'm very excited to see what happens in Syracuse in the Fran Brown era. And we talked about him a second ago, but uh, Sean Elliott, I think, is a fantastic hire, obviously, from South Carolina. Has had a ton of success while at Georgia State. Um, did leave like two days into spring practice, which is kind of an interesting dynamic that we will be uh, we will be following in the Georgia State program they did have to postpone practice and the spring game for the time being so it'll be interesting to see what happens there but anytime you can get a head coach to come in and be a position coach for your team it's never a bad thing by any means so I think Sean Elliott's a home run hire for South Carolina and then finally a head coach again in the SEC Mike Elko coming uh, from Duke over to A&M, coming back to A&M, uh, where he was the defensive coordinator for some years under Jimbo. And I think the biggest thing here is just identity. Uh, there were a lot of times during the Jimbo Fisher era where it just felt like A&M didn't have much of an identity, whether it was offensively or defensively. It didn't feel like they were a team that was going to come out and punch you in the nose every game. They didn't feel like a team that was going to come out and outpace you like a team like Texas or, um, you know, punch you in the nose like Michigan or th there are the elite teams in this sport always have a specific thing that they go back to always have um, the dudes that they go back to always have the concepts or the play calls or whatever it is that is kind of their fail safe. And it always felt like A&M was kind of figuring that out on the fly every single week and it never uh, made for very consistent football, and I don't think that'll be a problem with Mike Elko. Uh, he shows up every single day, and you know he's going to play hardcore football. You know he's going to play really aggressive. You know his teams are going to be very physical. So there is obviously going to be a learning curve. You're jumping into the SEC. Um, A&M's not necessarily at the most advantageous situation right now, but the reality is excuse me, all of this will develop into what I think will be a very sustainable model for this program, which is be who you are. Um, you know, you're in College Station, Texas, in, you know, kind of the middle of nowhere in some ways. You have a lot of guys um, that have a chip on their shoulder in some ways. Maybe they weren't recruited very hard by Texas, or maybe they um, got disrespected by some other programs. Maybe they, you know, found their way to to A&M through different circumstances. All you need to do is essentially play with a lot of energy, play hard, play physical, and I think you're going to have success in the long run. Now, I don't know if it's going to be in 2024, but that being said, they have a ton of talent on that team, and Mike Elko got a ton out of a Duke team that didn't have the prerequisite talent that a and going to have next year. So it'll be an interesting team to watch, but I think... It might not be 2024, but I think in the long run, Mike Elko is going to be just incredible for this A&M team. Um, but that's all I have for now, but there's still plenty of hires to happen. Um, Georgia doesn't have a wide receivers coach right now. Uh, I think Bama is either gearing up or setting to hire an uh, O-line coach, which I will definitely keep a track on. But still tons of hires to happen, essentially, and... Uh, so this will probably not be the last time that we do this segment. There will definitely be um, some additions and some people I just didn't include in this one that I will definitely include next time around. Um, but we are going to take our last break here, and then when we come back, it is Top 10 Tuesday. 
the very first edition, and we will break down my way too early top 10 for 2024. So stick around, and we will be right back.